What is up, Janksters? It's your boy, Graham, also known as HamHawks42 on the internet. And today I want to talk about a special card that is going to be making headlines in the next couple of months for a very special reason, and that is the Tabernacle at Pendril Vale. Now, this card was originally printed in 1994, so you might be wondering, why the heck am I talking about it now? Well, the reason that it's coming up now is because Wizards recently uncovered cases upon cases of original Legends cards such as the Tabernacle of Pendril Vale, that are going to be distributed in collector booster packs for Dominary United in September. And so as a result, there is a possibility that people will be able to open a pack fresh Tabernacle at Pendril Vale that had originally been printed 28 years ago in a pack this year. Very special, very exciting. If you wanted to learn more about that, there's actually a video on Wizards Official Magic the Gathering YouTube channel all about Magic's Lost Legends that can give you that information. But I want to talk about the Tabernacle specifically because Tabernacle is the most valuable card from the expansion Legends with good reason. It is incredibly important and this is going to be the chase card that frankly is going to sell a lot of Dominaria Collector Booster Packs. This card is on the reserve list, meaning that Wizards has made a promise to never reprint it or a functional, functionally identical version of this card. And... For various design purposes, I don't think they ever would want to anyway because it's just so darn powerful. Currently, on TCG Player, as of this recording, you can find busted up damaged versions of the Tabernacle of Pendril Vale for over $3,000. And if you want a decent copy with the one that's in, that's in okay shape, that's not frankly busted all to hell, it's gonna cost you around four or $5,000. It's a very expensive card. And part of it's the rarity, and you know, it is on the reserve list, there, therefore it just, there, there will never see another one like this. But there are other cards that are on the reserve list, such as, for example, Granite Gargoyle. Uh, you can get a reserve list copy of Granite Gargoyle for about two bucks, or a, a revised edition copy of Granite Gargoyle for about two bucks, um, because it's just not a good card. It's just completely unplayable. It's a 2-2 flyer for three that has like reverse fire breathing where you can give it a toughness buff uh, by spending red mana. You know, it's it's just not a good card at the end of the day. Um, an alpha version is still expensive just because they're just because of rarity. But at the end of the day, it's it's not special. Tabernacle of Pendervale very much is. And so let's talk about why that is. So the Tabernacle of Pendervale is a land that says all creatures now require an upkeep cost of one in addition to any other upkeep costs they may have. If the upkeep cost for a creature is not paid, the creature is destroyed. You are literally adding an upkeep cost to every single creature your opponent controls. That is a big freaking deal. At the beginning of your opponent's turn, appropriately in their upkeep step, before they have drawn their card for turn, they have the option to either sacrifice a creature or pay one for every single creature they control. In a situation where your opponent is playing elves or goblins or they're going wide with tokens, um, this presents them with a really, really rough situation where they have to spend mana just to keep their creatures around. The choice is keep the critter and pay mana or don't pay mana and lose the creature. So it, it's just absolutely devastating because if they've gone wide, if they have a large board that maybe that with more creatures than they have mana, they have to sacrifice a large number of creatures. And if they choose not to, their mana is tapped. And so they aren't able to cast whatever other spells they have and advance their plans on board. This is incredibly powerful. And on top of that, the cost to the user, the person who actually has this spell or this this card, it's not even a spell, the, this card in play, all they have to do to set it online is play it as a land. It's just their land drop for the turn. They can start the game by just putting this down and now all creatures have an upkeep of one for the rest of the game. For certain decks, they just lose. This is, I mean, in a situation where your opponent's playing goblins or elves, or if they're trying to go wide with like landfall synergies and commander with like Avenger of Zendikar or things like that, this just completely stops it. It's just dead in its tracks. It's over. <laughs> like It's one of the most powerful control pieces that have just, or stacks pieces, I should say. This prevents your opponents from, from playing creatures almost exclusively. And it's a land. Now there is a downside that is notable. It is a land, however, it does not tap for mana. So if you cast this, or again, if you, sorry, if you play this out in an early turn, you don't get any mana for that turn. So as a result, you are gonna be knocked off curve. If you're trying to cast a two drop on turn two, you're out of luck if you have Tabernacle of Pendervale down. That said, this type of ability 
if this was just on an enchantment, I would easily, easily pay four or five mana for it. So I think getting knockoff curve for shutting down creatures for the rest of the game, kind of worth it. So in a deck, so you would want to run this in a deck that does not run uh, that does not run creatures or does not run many creatures. That's really where this thing shines. And that's what makes this card worth so much. It is legal in Legacy. It is legal in Vintage. And if I'm not mistaken, it is legal in Commander. So this is one of those cards that you can... I mean, people talk about magic being pay to win. And in the case of Tabernacle at Pendril Vale, it kind of is. This card is just wildly powerful. And we see other lands like this in other sets, some of which are not on the reserve list, fortunately. Um, a for example, one, one parallel that I want to draw is Maze of Ith. Uh, I'm going to use, for the for the purpose of the visual uh, on the video, I am going to use a newer printing so it's easier to read rather than the original. Also, the original artwork is the stuff of nightmares. Just throwing that out there. But with Maze of Ith, it is also a land that does not tap for mana. However, it says tap, untap target attacking creature, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to and by that creature this turn. So what you're doing is you're effectively removing an attacker from combat by tapping one land. So here we have a situation where you are using one of your lands that is incapable of producing mana to negate the effect or negate the benefit of one creature attacking you. So it's powerful. It's good if your opponent has one really large creature that they've kind of Voltroned out and it's very impressive, very scary. Maze of Ith can blank that creature. It kind of functions like a perfect blocker in one land. So really cool card. I love it. But this is an example of a card that they have reprinted and Wizards has basically said, this is the power level of non-mana producing lands that we want to encourage. Um, and, that, and when I say encourage, I mean, this is also legal legacy vintage commander. Um, it, it, and they have been reprinting it. It is not on the reserve list. This card is fair and balanced. Tabernacle, on the other hand, is just not. This card's insane. And it's just, the, when you have a situation where supply is very, very low, power is very, very high, you know, you get, you get really expensive cards. And for the first time in almost 30 years, people will be able to open this in packs in a couple of months. Kind of exciting, kind of cool. And I'll, I gotta be honest, I'm probably gonna pick up one or two uh, Dominaria Collector Boosters in hopes of cracking one of these. Cause um, while the price tag of $4,000 is certainly not going to stay, or is not going to stick in the short term because we will have an influx of these hitting the market, this card is the kind of thing that even if Wizards were to abolish the reserve list tomorrow, they probably wouldn't wanna reprint this card because if its power level is just so high, this is not the kind of thing that they want to encourage in their game, I would imagine. So, yeah, that's Tabernacle of Pendril Vale. So if you hear people talk about Tabernacle when they're talking about MTG, this is what they're referring to. The Tabernacle of Pendril Vale, wildly powerful, incredibly popular in older formats where it's playable, and in control style decks that are not running any creatures, it costs nothing to play it other than one land drop, which is about as cheap as a spell can get without just being a zero cost spell. I mean, this is, it's incredibly, incredibly powerful. So thank you so much for checking out the video. Thank you for hanging with it. I appreciate it. Uh, one of the things that we love to do on this channel is talk about specific cards and explain them. And uh, and with the Lost Legends coming out, um, one of the things I have been doing is looking back at Legends cards and doing kind of, uh, not retrospectives, but deep dives on individual cards, including uh, I just recently posted a video on Chains of Mephistopheles, which is possibly the most confusing card ever printed. Uh, so if you'd like to see that and see what that's all about, I'd, I'd love to, to get your feedback on that as well. So thanks so much for checking this out. Appreciate you, and I'll catch you on the next one.